This is the Hatbox Ghost, a popular illusion that was present in the Haunted Mansion when it opened in 1969 and got removed a few days later. The illusion didn't work very well. You could see his head when it disappeared off of his shoulders and appeared in his hatbox, and you could see it in both places at once. It was a very unconvincing illusion. But Disney has since learned hey, from their mistakes and- Hey! Made, wait, uh, What are you doing? I was gonna do the video this week. No, I'm doing the video this week where it's about illusions. No, I was the one doing the illusions video. You're next okay, week. Okay, well, if you want to do the video, you can do the video. Okay. I have the hatbox ghost right here. I'm going to do the video then. All right, well, I guess... See you guys later. This, this guy's going to do the video. Yeah, I'm doing the video. Sorry about that, guys. That was that was a little weird. Uh, he already took the hatbox ghost with him. Dang it. But unlike the hatbox ghost and that weird green screen thing that I just did, Disney can pull off a lot of amazing and really convincing effects, like the one you see going on behind me. This is insane, guys. And today I figured why not just count down my top 10 favorite effects in the Disney park that will blow your mind. Your mind will explode if you watch this video. Sorry about that. All right, number 10. When people think of illusions at the Disney parks, their minds usually go to one attraction in particular, and that is the House of Illusions, as Walt called it. And Mark Davis is the master in charge of our House of Illusions, or uh, uh, what do we call it? Uh, a Haunted Mansion. Haunted Mansion. The Haunted Mansion. And the Haunted Mansion has many, many different kinds of illusions, but the one I want to focus on in this video is the Pepper's Ghost effect. But We've talked about Pepper's Ghost in the past, and a lot of people know how it's done. A light source is shined onto a person or a figure, which is then reflected into an angled piece of glass up on the stage or show area, and because the image is just a reflection, it appears translucent and kind of like a ghost. The same kind of technology that was used for the Tupac hologram, which wasn't really a hologram, more of a reflection, but like I said, we've talked about the Haunted Mansion use of Pepper's Ghost a lot on this channel. We're going to talk about the uses you can find in other attractions at the Disney parks, like the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh. You can find it when Winnie the Pooh drifts off into Dreamland, or Nightmare Land, ugh, and seemingly floats out of his own body. A pretty impressive use of this illusion. You can find another example of this in Fantasyland in Pinocchio's Daring Journey. When at the end of the ride you see the blue fairy turn Pinocchio finally at long last into a real boy, but when you look behind you to see where the blue fairy was, she's mysteriously gone. Unless you look behind your cart, you'll be able to see the actual animatronic that the light was shined on to create the Pepper's Ghost effect. Pretty cool if you know where to look. There's also a ton of examples of this in the Pirate's Lair Caves on Tom Sawyer Island. There's just so many uses of this in the Disney parks, it's hard to count them all. So being such a convincing effect pulled off with such simple technology, I think lands this one at number 10, because it's very widely known. But let's move on to more lesser known illusions, like, um, oh. Like this one. Cars. Not cars, but, you know, cars. Peter Pan's Flight is a Fantasyland dark ride classic that opened with the rest of Disneyland Park in 1955. The ride was a suspended dark ride, which means instead of running along a track on the ground, the track was instead on the ceiling, making it so you could look down at the sets, giving you the feeling of flying, like you, you know, like Peter Pan. And one of the most impressive parts of the ride was a massive model of the City of London, where guests would be able to look down and see Big Ben, boats on the River Thames, and even some teeny tiny cars driving down the street. Now it's kind of hard to see it in videos because they are such small tiny little dots, but the cars move through the streets and it's pretty convincing. And the illusion of these cars driving down the streets is accomplished by painting little tiny specks on a bicycle chain that glow under a black light. And as the bicycle chain is pulled along Long, it looks like the little tiny specks are headlights of cars driving down the street. Something that's been around since 1955, an effect that's so convincing they didn't have to change it because people still buy it to this day. Those aren't little bicycle chains, those are cars. So the next time you're in the park, look down at the model of London, I promise it shows up better when you're actually there, and think to yourself about how this model is essentially just a giant oversized bicycle. Not really a model. Kind of. You know, not all effects in the Disney rides have to be mind-blowingly good. Sometimes they can be mind-blowingly terrible, and that's what number 8 is. I just wanted to put this in here, not because I like it more than 9 or 10, but because I think it bears mentioning 
This is just really bad. Now, admittedly, Navi River Journey is one of my favorite attractions at Animal Kingdom. It's a little short, I'll give you that, but the atmosphere is unrivaled anywhere else in that park, I think. Disney needs more chill boat rides, what can I say? And the effects in the ride are, for the most part, extremely convincing. Except for this one that I'm going to talk about now. This one is probably one of the worst things I've ever seen in a Disney ride. There's a part of the ride where you pass in front of a small clearing and trickling down from the clearing is a waterfall. Just a very small, quaint waterfall. And instead of making the waterfall out of, you know, water lit from behind or underneath, Disney decided they should project the water onto the slope and have bubbles come up from underneath the surface to represent the waterfall hitting the river instead of just putting a little waterfall there. They did all of this instead of just putting a tiny little bit of a waterfall. Now trust me, however good you think this looked in the video, it does not look convincing in real life. It's one of the worst things I've ever seen, like I said. Instead of just hooking up a hose and having water travel slowly into the river, Disney decided to use way more money than was necessary and make this really unconvincing projection effect of water flowing down the slope. I don't really know what Disney was thinking when they did this, I don't really know whose idea this was, but let's just Let's not let this happen again, guys, come on. This one really just kind of blows my mind as to how it got approved, not as to how the effect is done. We all know how it's done, we can see. Just hook up a hose next time, guys. Okay, now who here loves Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room? Raise your hand. Go ahead, raise your hand. Okay, who here hates it? All right, you guys can leave. That ride is amazing. Now this illusion is in Walt Disney World's version. It may be at Disneyland's, I'm not quite sure, but Walt Disney World's for sure has this. Now the look of the Tiki Room is meant to evoke that Pacific Island feel, all the way down to the thatched roofs, but it's not actually thatch. But in order to withstand the hurricanes and all the wind Florida gets, the roofs have to be designed a little bit tougher than just thatch. And so, instead of real thatch, Disney decided to go for a more practical application of metal strips. That way, when it starts to get really, really windy, thatch isn't blowing all over Adventureland into people's faces and eyes and other parts. So it's a bit more sturdy for the weather, and all Disney had to do was paint thousands and thousands and thousands of metal strips to that weird cream straw color. But being far away enough from the roof and the forced perspective of the tower and the main hall itself makes the appearance of this really metal roof a very convincing illusion. That will... <clears throat> that, that will blow your mind. Now there's another effect that's very similar to the Pepper's Ghost effect that we talked about earlier in the Haunted Mansion, that's also in the Haunted Mansion, but also in Disney's newest super immersive dark ride, Rise of the Resistance. When people are asked how is Pepper's Ghost done, they usually say something like, oh, probably mirrors or holograms or lasers, and that's not the case. But in this case, yes, mirrors are used. And you know what? Yeah, let's go ahead and start with the Haunted Mansion, because this is my channel, and I have to talk about the Haunted Mansion in every video, no matter what. Look, I got the statue back. The Endless Hallway is a scene in the Haunted Mansion in which you look down a corridor that seems to go on forever and see a candelabra floating down the middle of it. Very spooky and very eerie, but it's a very simple effect. As you can see clearly in this picture, taken with the flash on, you can see that there's actually a full-length mirror covering the hallway at the end, which gives it the illusion of going on forever. A similar effect can be found in Rise of the Resistance when you go into the hangar scene. Right about there. A massive floor-to-ceiling length mirror covers up that portion of the wall, which makes it look like the hangar goes back even further and the doors are sort of popped open, but they're not. It's just a mirror, guys. Keep up. A very, very similar illusion can be found only at Disneyland. Sorry, Orlandians, you guys miss out on this one. And this one you get to see up close when you ride past a skeletal pirate. Hanging there with he be treasure. And then as you ride past, he turns into a living pirate, still with his treasure. A similar effect can be seen inside of Journey to Imagination when you pass the Vision Center. You keep riding and you see a butterfly flying up in a cage. And then you move past the butterfly and mysteriously, it's vanished. Now is this magic? How did they do this? What you're actually looking at is half of a pirate split right down the middle by a mirror, which makes it look like a whole pirate. But then when you go onto the other side of the mirror, a new half figure on the other side of the mirror is reflected instead, making it look like it transforms or disappears before your very eyes. The middle rope that's suspending this poor pirate is actually what's hiding the edge of the mirror. In the case of the butterfly, it's not two halves of different figures, it's instead one half of one figure to make it look like it disappears instead of transforms. The edge of the mirror, of course, is being obscured by the middle bamboo pole in the cage. Mirrors! <laughs> Who would have guessed? Me! I would have. I would have guessed. 
Fire. From the dawn of humanity, it's what separated us from the beasts. Man, from monkey. Oh, dang it. And during the making of the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction at Disneyland, Walt Disney Imagineering made it no secret that they wanted to flex that we knew how to make fire on all of our animal friends. So what did Walt Disney Imagineering do? Well, they put explosive fireballs in every single corner they possibly could in Pirates of the Caribbean. Explosions going off everywhere, guests' eyebrows being singed off, it was insanity when the ride opened. I'm kidding. It's actually in the end scene when the town is burning. With the addition in Walt Disney World of Smellitzers in the ride as well, bringing the entire towns on fire, everyone run for your lives effect to a whole new level, you see the fire effect is accomplished by shining an orange light onto silk sheets being blown upwards by a fan, which gives the very realistic impression that the entire town is burning down. Oh my God, we gotta run, everyone's gonna die. There's a very famous photo of Yale Gracie recreating the everything is fine meme in Pirates of the Caribbean, and it's a Super cool picture, Yale Gracie looks like he's on fire, but it's just sheets, guys. It's just sheets and orange lights. Okay, this time we have another mirror trick, this time in Disneyland at Roger Rabbit's Cartoon Spin. Now, if you've ever been on the attraction, you know the ride ends with Roger bringing you through a portable hole back to the loading zone. Pretty cool of him to do that. Thanks, Roger. As he places the hole onto the wall, a door magically appears out of nowhere and you go through back to the loading zone to get off the ride. Pretty cool. Except it's not coming out of nowhere and you're being tricked. Come on, guy, look at the title. If we go back to our footage from before, you will notice some lighting inconsistencies up by the top of the portable hole, and that's by design. This is a mirror. You can see the mirror highlighted in yellow, and as he pushes the dot facade back into the wall, it matches up with the door and you move through it. So I guess this just goes to show you that if you can ever not quite explain a Disney illusion, just go ahead and say, uh, there's probably a mirror there. I think it's done through mirrors because realistically you're gonna be right like 65% of the time. I like those odds. The Indiana Jones Adventure Ride at Disneyland is a pinnacle of Walt Disney Imagineering. It holds up so well even though it opened all the way back in 1995. Once again we've uh, turned an action movie into a live action uh, extravaganza. That's the most amazing thing I've ever been on. Fabulous. And I think a lot of the success is owed to the amazing special effects you can find inside, like the abandoned, broken door illusion, but we're not talking about that in this one. We're going to talk about a rock illusion, or a hallway wall illusion, whatever you want to call it. In the final climactic scene of the ride, it may look like the boulder is rolling perilously down a hill towards you while you back up, but actually you're staying still the whole time. Even if we slow the footage down, there are no mirrors here, everybody. This is the wall moving forward while your ride vehicle stays stationary and a boulder rolls forward a little bit on a track. Here's an amazing video diagram I found that explains it pretty simply. Your car enters the scene and as the boulder begins to rotate, the walls move forward and the boulder moves forward a little bit while you stay still and then eventually you go underneath it back to the loading area. Pretty simple. The effect is so convincing that even the Imagineers who worked on the attraction sometimes have to ground themselves, as you can see in this Disney After Dark news presentation. For Disneyland, the bigger the better, which led us straight to the ride's grand finale. See how Indy's hips are moving, his legs are moving, he's looking around. This is where the riders think they're rolling backwards, but stay still. There it goes. Now watch the ball. The ball's rolling oh. back here. See that? This is so cool. And it feel, in the vehicle, it feels like you're actually backing up. And the ball's moving towards you. The special effects are so realistic, even the crew, after thousands of viewings, still gets faked out. What's it feel like for you? Oh, it's, I have to look at the floor to make sure I'm not moving. Me too, Imagineer. Me too. You guys get it? Okay. Forced perspective is a very unique way Disney tricks our eyes by making features of structures smaller as the building gets taller, blah, blah. Guys, you heard it all before. I'm assuming you all know what forced perspective is. And we're not going to talk about Disney using forced perspective on the castle or the Tower of Terror because that's been done before. What we are going to talk about is Disney using forced perspective in attractions. Now that's pretty cool. Now I talked about it in my last video, Fantasyland is changing everybody. Open your eyes! Uh, 
go check it out if you want to. There's an amazing use of forced perspective in this ride that uses screens. As you ride past Alice chasing down the white rabbit, the perspective of the projection sort of shifts as you ride past in the same speed and at the same angle. That gives this 2D screen a 3D depth of field sort of feeling, and I think it's really well done. You can find other optical illusions like this in rides like Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout or Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. And since we talked about the Tower of Terror already, let's talk about the hallway, because that's another example of forced perspective. Yes, there is a Pepper's Ghost illusion in this hallway too, but just like in Journey into Imagination, where I showed you that Willy Wonka hallway, this one's also sort of a Willy Wonka hallway, where things get smaller as it goes further back. So just keep that all in mind next time someone tells you that forced perspective is great when you look at the castle or Main Street. Tell them there's much more to it, and it's all done with mirrors. Just tell them that. Well guys, uh, rat number one, <laughs> I gotta say it feels good to be at the end of the video, but I, I have to come clean with you all. I didn't make this video alone. I had a little bit of help. Hey guys. Yeah, uh, sorry, I've just been so busy doing you know, live streams, other videos, Parks Con, lots of stuff coming up that I'm really excited to show you guys. But it's gonna be good. Here, here he is, he yeah. helped me make the video. Yeah, I had to help out a little bit. He couldn't take it. Yeah, well, you're on borrowed time. Anyways, guys, let's talk about the Haunted Mansion. Come on, guys, you knew I had to. And what better way to end this than with the classic hitchhiking ghost illusion? But let's build up to that. Let's start in the graveyard, where you see fog rolling in over the hills of the graveyard as the ghosts begin their party. But if you look closely, you may not see a single smoke machine or fog maker anywhere in sight. And that's because there aren't any. To make the illusion of spooky fog, Disney placed a scrim across the entire graveyard scene, a very sheer sort of material. When light is shined on the scrim in different ways, it does different effects, like hiding different show scenes in the Carousel of Progress. Notice how this scene looks a little foggy because it's behind scrim, or the Haunted Mansion stretching room, or in this case, adding to the atmosphere of the ride. By giving it a foggy, spooky, scary, uh, skeleton sort of feeling. But then you work your way up to the hitchhiking ghosts. Ooh, 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 my favorite. These guys mean business and their effect is pulled off entirely with mirrors. Yeah, it's, it's two-way mirrors. That way you can see through them, kind of, and you can also see yourself. A belt moving at the exact same speed as your Doom Buggies in the exact same spot, but on the other side, instead of a Doom Buggy, it's an audio animatronic of Phineas, Ezra, or Gus. And when a light is shown on them, you can see them through the mirror, and they appear a little bit translucent, so they seem to be sitting in the Doom Buggy along with you, and they seem to be ghosts. But they're not. They're just animatronics. Sorry. But like I said, whenever anybody asks you how any effect is done, say mirrors. That's, that's all you have to say, they'll understand. And those, everybody, are ten different illusions from all over the Disney parks, but mostly the Haunted Mansion. Did I miss any super awesome state-of-the-art effects that are done with mirrors? Please make sure to let me know in the description down below, because I need more mirror illusions. And with that, everybody, I'm going to call it for this video, and I will leave you with some parting words from a very good friend of mine. Who are you? Why do you look just like me? Hey, wait a second. That means you can do videos for me. How much do you charge per hour? Good night, everybody. I did a fade to white that time. Hello, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching my top 10 Disney illusions that will blow your mind video. Was your mind blown? Uh, again, sorry about that. If you're interested, episode 4 of Foolish Mortals is live now. I will be linking that in the description down below. And if you want to watch the previous live streams that I did this past week and month, uh, head over to the link in the description as well. It will bring you to a playlist and you can watch all of them to your heart's content, everybody. Very special thanks to my patrons on Patreon.com. Head over there and even just $1 gets you access to a never-before-seen lost offhand Disney video. And that's the truth. It's over there, it's a very rough cut, and only the Patreon supporters over there will ever be able to see it. So if that interests you, head over there. I, I promise, it's pretty cool. So how are you guys doing? Huh? Disneyland. Disneyland's opening end of April. That's gonna be super cool. I, I'm probably not gonna be able to go, but it's gonna be amazing for my friends who live there. I hope they're very happy. I hope they get a mint julep and it's just a lot of fun for them. I'm gonna be there in spirit. Again, let me know if I missed any mirror illusions. That's mirror only. No forced perspective, nothing like that. Only mirror illusions. 
and I think I'm gonna wrap this one up. Guys, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. It'll be about the Haunted Mansion, probably, or at least it'll be in there somewhere. Goodbye. Wait, that was a fade to black. Dang it!